circular motion. Acceleration of a body. Moving in a circle of radius r with uniform speed v is v square upon r directed towards the center. According to the second law, the force F providing this acceleration is F is equal to mv square upon r where m is the mass of the body. This force directed towards the center is called the centripetal force. For a stone rotated in a circle by a string, the centripetal force is provided by the tension in the string. The centripetal force for motion of a planet around the sun is the gravitational force on the planet due to the sun. For a car taking a circular turn on a horizontal road, the centripetal force is the force of friction. The circular motion of a car on a flat and banked road gives interesting application of the laws of motion. Imagine swinging a rope around in a circle with a can attached to the end. The can is in a constant state of acceleration since its velocity is constantly changing due to its circular path. Acceleration of the can is caused by a net force acting on the object. In the case of an object moving in a circular path, the net force is called centripetal force or center seeking force and is always pulling an object toward the center of a circle. Without this force, an object will continue moving in a straight line motion. The centripetal force is the tension on the rope. The centripetal force is equal to mass times velocity squared divided by the radius. As these variables change, so will the centripetal force. An increase in mass or velocity, or a decrease in radius, will result in an increase in the centripetal force. A decrease in mass or velocity, or an increase in radius, will result in a decrease in the centripetal force. A change in velocity results in the largest change in centripetal force. If the rope is cut, the can will no longer maintain a circular path and it will fly in a straight line tangent due to Newton's first law of inertia. The force of gravity pulls the moon towards the center of the earth. This pull is the centripetal force keeping the moon in orbit around the earth. If earth's gravity ceased to exist, the moon would fly off into space in a straight line. Another example of centripetal force is the force that binds mud to a tire as it rotates. As the rotation speed of the tire increases, the centripetal force will not be great enough to hold the mud onto the tire, and the mud will fly off the tire in straight line tangents. As we saw with the can that was attached to the string, the centripetal force is the force that creates the tension on the string, the center-seeking force. There are two perspectives in this example, outside of the can and inside the can. As Newton's third law states, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. From outside of the can, there should be an outward reaction force to the centripetal force. This center fleeing force is known as the centrifugal force. The reactive centrifugal force is the reaction force to a centripetal force. The can, undergoing curved motion, constantly accelerates toward the axis of rotation. 
This centripetal acceleration is provided by a centripetal force, which is exerted on the can by some other object. This is the reactive centrifugal force. It is directed away from the center of rotation and is exerted by the rotating can on the object that originates the centripetal acceleration. If an object is placed inside the can, the object appears to have an outward force pushing it against the bottom of the can and away from the center of rotation. The apparent centrifugal force is most commonly introduced as an outward force apparent in a rotating frame or reference. It is apparent or fictitious in the sense that it is not part of an interaction but actually the object's inertia. The object naturally wants to travel in a straight line, but the centripetal force doesn't allow this. This type of force is associated with describing motion in a non-inertial reference frame and referred to as a fictitious or inertial force. The reactionary and apparent centrifugal forces are not real forces. The reactionary centrifugal force is a result of the rotation, not a force. The apparent centrifugal force is really the object's inertia. A more accurate definition for centrifugal force would be the lack of centripetal force. The concept of centrifugal force is used to describe the physics of rotating devices such as a centrifuge, centrifugal pump, centrifugal governors, and more. Even though centrifugal force is not a real force, it's commonly used because it's easier to describe the fictional force than describing the lack of the real centripetal force. Pumps that have an inlet near the center of rotation and an impeller that forces water outward against a volute to channel the water to an output away from the center of rotation are known as centrifugal pumps because the water is center fleeing. The centripetal force is not strong enough to keep the water traveling in a circle with the impeller, resulting in the water moving out towards the pump volute. The physics of a centrifugal pump are not based on the imaginary centrifugal force, but the lack of centripetal force. Uniform Circular Motion Circular motion means when an object is moving along a circular path. Example, motion of blades of an electric fan, earth moving around the sun. Let us explain with the help of an activity. Take a string and tie a stone at one of its end. Hold its second end in your hand and drill so that the stone performs a circular motion. Speed of the stone should remain the same throughout the motion. So the motion of the stone is uniform circular motion. To know the direction of velocity of stone at any point, release the stone at that point and observe the direction in which it goes. If this activity is carried out four or five times at different points, you will observe that the stone traveled in different directions every time. Direction of stone is a straight line and is along the tangent to the point of release. Thus the direction of velocity keeps changing every moment in uniform circular motion. In uniform circular motion, speed of the body remains constant, but the direction of motion is changing continuously. Therefore, we can say in a uniform motion, velocity is changing continuously. Hence, it is an accelerated motion. Consider an athlete moving along a circular track of radius r. Consider any point A on the track. Direction of velocity at any point A is along the tangent to the circle at point A. Time taken by athlete to cover one round is equal to t. Distance covered in one round is equal to circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So speed of athlete v is equal to distance by time that is 2 pi r by t. Banking of roads 01. Objective to understand the role of friction at circular turnings and banked roads. Maximum allowed speed while taking a turn. When a car takes a turn, each curvilinear section of the turn can be approximated to be an arc of a circle with a certain radius. A centripetal force must act towards the center of the arc to enable the vehicle to move along it. This centripetal force is provided by the static friction of the surface the car is moving on. The normal force N 
balances the weight of the car mg. If the coefficient of static friction is mu, the maximum frictional force which can act towards the center of the arc is mu mg. While making a turn, if the velocity of the car is v and radius of the arc is r, the centripetal force acting on it would be equal to mv square by r. For the car to make a safe turn, the required centripetal force should be within the limit of static friction, which implies that the velocity of the car should be such that it satisfies the relation mv square by r is less than or equal to mu mg. In other words, v should be less than or equal to the limiting value root over mu rg. If the car moves with a velocity greater than the limiting value, it skids away from the center. Banking of roads. We cannot always rely on friction as it depends on external factors such as rain or frost, which significantly decreases the value of static friction. To avoid skidding of vehicles at turns, the outer edge of the road is raised up, which is called banking. Suppose surface of the road at a turn makes an angle theta with the horizontal surface. This results in the horizontal component of normal force n sine theta acting towards center providing the necessary centripetal force at the turn. Friction is not taken into consideration here. Therefore n sine theta is equal to mv square by r. The vertical component of the normal force balances the weight of the vehicle. So, n cos theta is equal to mg. From these equations, we arrive at the equation tan theta equals to v square by rg. Thus, v is equal to root over rg tan theta. This equation gives the speed which, in the absence of friction for a given angle of inclination and radius of curvature, would ensure that the vehicle remains in its designated path. This is known as the rated speed or balancing speed of a turn. Rated speed of a curve does not depend on the mass of the object. Summary. The maximum speed with which a vehicle can move without skidding while taking a turn on a horizontal road is root over mu rg. The maximum speed with which a vehicle can move without skidding while taking a turn on a banked road is root over rg tan theta. Vertical Circular Motion Objective to study the dynamics of vertical circular motion. One end of a massless inextensible string of length L is fixed to a fixed point O and its other end is tied to a very small bob of mass M. The bob is given a sudden push at the lowest point A in the horizontal direction so that its velocity is V not at A. The bob takes a circular path of radius L in the vertical plane. Let's divide the circular path the bob may take into four quadrants around point O. 0 to 90 degrees, 90 to 180 degrees, 180 to 270 degrees, and 270 to 360 degrees. Consider the bob at point P where OP makes an angle theta with the vertical line OA. Speed of the bob at P is V, and it is tangential to the circular path. Let's draw the free body diagram of the bob at P. At P, tension T acts along the radius. Gravitational pull M, G, acts in a vertically downward direction, which can be split into two components, one in the radial direction, and the other perpendicular to it. 
Net force acting along the radial direction is T minus mg cos theta. This force along the radial direction is the net centripetal force Fc. But we know that the centripetal force required to keep the mass m moving with tangential speed v in a circular motion of radius l is equal to mv square by l. Therefore, mv square by l is equal to t minus mg cos theta. Hence, tension in the string is mv square by l plus mg cos theta. If the initial velocity of the bob is very small, it may not be able to achieve angles greater than 90 degrees, in which case it simply traverses back the path it takes. If initial velocity of the bob is greater, it may cross the horizontal line, but will not be able to reach the highest point. When the bob progresses into the second quadrant, tension in the string gradually decreases and becomes zero at some point. When tension in the string becomes zero, the string becomes slack and the bob undergoes projectile motion from this point onwards. Minimum initial velocity to complete the vertical circular motion. Consider the case where initial velocity of the bob is sufficient to complete the whole circle. At the highest point B, Theta is 180 degrees. Substituting theta equal to 180 degrees in this equation, tension in the string is equal to mv square by L minus mg. If the initial speed is just sufficient to bring the bob to the highest point, tension in the string at this point is zero. Therefore, mv square by L equals to mg, which gives v equals to square root of gl. This is the minimum velocity the bob can have at the highest point. If we take the horizontal plane at the lowest point a as reference, the bob has only kinetic energy at a. At the highest point, the bob has kinetic as well as potential energy. In a circular path, tension in the string always acts perpendicular to the displacement of the bob. Hence, work done by tension of the string is zero throughout the motion of the bob. As there is no external work done on the bob, mechanical energy is conserved in the gravitational field. Applying the law of conservation of mechanical energy at the lowest and highest points, that is, kinetic energy of bob at the lowest point, half mv not square is equal to sum of its potential energy, mg2l, and kinetic energy, half mv square at the highest point. Substituting, velocity at the highest point as root over gl, we get half mv not square equal to 2mgl plus half mgl. Upon cancelling m on both sides and solving, we get v not equal to root over 5gl. Hence, minimum velocity the bob should be given at the lowest point A, so that it completes a full circle, is root over 5gl. Summary. The minimum velocity a bob should have at the lowest point, such that it completes the vertical circle, is root over 5gl. Over 5